As the fourth and final region to receive the high-speed train, the arrival of these sets onto the Midland Main Line turned what was once the backwater intercity railway of England into a competitive main line network that now rivals the West and East Coast main lines for vital connections between London and the North. The Midland Main Line from London St Pancras was, much like the East Coast Main Line, developed in phases between the 1830s and 1860s, primarily by the eponymous Midland Railway, which had been formed in 1844 through the merger of the North Midland Railway, the Midland Counties Railway, and the Birmingham and Derby Junction Railway, creating, by 1870, the traditional core route that stretches from London to Leeds via Bedford, Kettering, Leicester, Loughborough, Nottingham, Derby, Chesterfield and Sheffield, as well as providing its own route to Manchester Central via Cheadle Heath, and a route to Scotland via the Settle and Carlisle, with connections via the Waverley route to Edinburgh, or the Glasgow Southwestern line to Glasgow St Enoch, the main line's primary workload being coal traffic across the East Midlands and South Yorkshire, as well as being a vital corridor for steel traffic being output from the major steel manufacturing regions around Sheffield. Although the line did play host to multiple top-line expresses that did battle with equivalents on the West and East Coast main lines for premier service to Northern England and Scotland. Under the Grouping Act of 1923, the Midland Railway, and by extension the main line, was incorporated into the ranks of the newly formed London Midland and Scottish Railway, although unlike its primary route out of London Euston, the Midland Main Line never held the same prestige as the flagship West Coast, being provided only three dedicated named trains that included the Thames 4th Express of 1927 from Edinburgh to London via Hoyk, Carlisle and Leeds, the Thames Clyde Express, also of 1927, from Glasgow St Enoch to London via Kilmarnock, Carlisle and Leeds, and the Palatine of 1938, which ran daily from Manchester Central to London St Pancras, while motive power on the line comprised a motley selection of slower passenger engines and mixed traffic locomotives, such as the Stania Class 5s and Ivert Class 2s, the line being tailored more to its role in transporting the domestic coal supply, rather than as a viable through intercity route. World War II, and the subsequent collapse of the LMS's infrastructure and service due to under-maintenance, leading eventually to the nationalisation of the rail system in 1948 under British Railways. Ultimately, the lower priority of the route during the 1940s and 50s meant it was often used as a test track for more modern forms of traction, perhaps the most notable being the two LMS 10,000 and 10,001 diesel-electric prototypes of 1948 and the English electric DP-1 Deltic prototype of 1955, both of which were trialled extensively out of London St Pancras on service diagrams to the north, while dedicated diesel locomotives to replace steam came in the form of the powerful though heavy-set peaks starting with the initial batch of 10 Class 44s in 1959, followed by the more widespread Class 45s of 1960 and the smaller fleet of Class 46s in 1961, each of which powered a mixture of top-end passenger trains together with semi-fast workings, with the number of named trains on the route also increasing with the start of such venerable services as the Master Cutler, the White Rose and the Waverley. Perhaps the most notable new service introduced on the Midland Main Line was the Midland Pullman of September 1960 which had the distinction of being one of only two BR regions to operate the famous Blue Pullman 6-8 car diesel sets, which were driven by two power cars at either end of the consist, and were notable for being the very pinnacle of luxury travel during the short period they were operated, the Midland Pullman initially starting as a single morning out, evening return working between Manchester Central and London St Pancras, before complaints as to the underutilisation of the two dedicated six-car sets, led to the start of the midday Pullman service to Nottingham during the downtime between Midland Pullman operations. The Midland Pullman, despite its absolute luxury, not being the success British Railways was hoping for, due to the poor timing of the morning departure from Manchester that arrived into London far too late for most long-distance business commuters. While the midday Pullman barely saw any patronage due to its off-peak running time, and was often described by staff as the most luxurious empty stock working on the network, the Midland Pullman eventually being axed in 1966, following the electrification of the West Coast Main Line to Manchester Piccadilly, that saw this service replaced by the electrically hauled Manchester Pullman out of London Euston. The departure of the Midland Pullman appeared endemic of a general decline in the service and upkeep of the Midland Main Line, as its role of being a route to the north began to lose out against not only the motorways and domestic airlines, but also the rival West and East Coast Main Lines, the former of which had been electrified as far as Liverpool and Manchester, with 100 mile an hour operation throughout, and the latter being powered by the extremely complex but superbly fast Class 55 Deltic locomotives meaning the winding and sluggish Midland Main Line was losing justification and thus faced the possibility of partial closure at several instances throughout the 1960s and 70s, the most notable being when proposals were made to close the Grand London St Pancras Station and reroute Midland services into the neighbouring King's Cross, 
though the efforts of renowned poet Sir John Betjeman helped to save this magnificent structure from closure and subsequent demolition. However, while the route had been saved, what remained was a stark and often underutilized system with a deteriorating service and a very poor reputation that was in desperate need of a revival and thus following the introduction of HST sets on the western, eastern and cross-country services, it soon became apparent that these 125 mile an hour express trains would be the perfect solution in getting the Midland Main Line back on its feet. And thus, as the production run for the Class 43 power cars and their dedicated coaches came to an end during the final months of 1982, rounding out 197 locomotives and 723 Mark III trailers, Several HST sets were transferred from the Western Region and Cross Country Service to the Midland Region between London St Pancras, Leicester, Nottingham, Derby and Sheffield in October 1982, followed by a full launch of Midland Intercity 125 operations for public use in May 1983. The arrival of the HSTs coinciding with the resignaling of the network around Leicester to increase speeds north of Bedford from 90 to 110 miles an hour. As with other regions of the BR network, the introduction of HSTs on the Midland upturned the balance of rolling stock provision, and throughout the remainder of the 1980s, the Class 45 and 46 peaks were relegated to secondary passenger and semi-fast workings before seeing their full retirement in 1989, express services between London and the East Midlands being handled almost exclusively by HST sets, with named trains subsequently transferred onto the new traction, and by the end of the decade included the venerable Master Cutler from Leeds to London and the Robin Hood from Nottingham to London. Although the full potential of the HSTs on the Midland region remained somewhat curtailed due to both the archaic signalling and track work present on the route that lasted well into the 1990s, with some sections still controlled by Victorian-era semaphore signals that were finally replaced in around 1991 by three-aspect colour lights throughout, while the general topography of the line, especially north of Bedford, precluded 125 mile an hour operation like the other main lines out of London, a problem Intercity had been fully aware of when introducing HSTs, who had based their rationale for utilising the sets more on their improved acceleration and braking, which helped to reduce journey times overall and see a greater financial return on investment. On April 28, 1996, as part of the privatisation of British Rail, National Express were announced to have won the bid to operate the former Intercity Midland franchise, inheriting 31 power cars based at Neville Hill in Leeds and Derby Etches Park that were immediately refurbished into the company's iconic teal and tangerine livery which also included a comprehensive refresh of carriage interiors and the onboard service. While as part of their franchise commitments, Midland Mainline were to both introduce new stock to supplement HST operations, but also improve the reliability of the HSTs themselves, this being done through the continuation of an early pilot scheme to replace the original Paxman Valenta power plants with updated Paxman VP185 units, as trialled on four power cars on the western region out of London Paddington since 1991. The VP185s demonstrating lower noise pollution and higher efficiency, thus making them ideal to improve the overall availability of Midland Mainline's HST fleet. The lack of power cars due to this refurbishment work, which lasted for around six months, being covered by either loco hauled stock top and tailed by Class 47s, or spare HST sets hired in from Virgin Trains and, on one occasion, First Great Western. As part of its franchise commitments, in 1999 Midland Main Line became the first operator to introduce the Class 170 Turbostar units, these 100 mile an hour trains being put to work on semi-fast London to Derby and Nottingham services in order to speed up top-line expresses powered by HSTs, these units essentially providing a stopgap until the faster and more capable Class 222 Meridian units were brought in from May 2004, the last Class 170s being transferred to central trains during the same year. Class 222s, of which 23 sets were ordered by Midland Main Line, forming part of the same family as the Class 220 and 221 Voyager units for Virgin Cross Country, and were originally delivered in four, five and nine car formations. The combined influence of both HSTs and Meridians helping to revolutionise express services on the Midland Main Line, while, in May 2003, during a decade-long upgrade of the West Coast Main Line under Network Rail, the Strategic Rail Authority, or SRA, requested that Midland Mainline cover the lack of direct Virgin train services between Manchester Piccadilly and London Euston by providing several replacement diagrams out of London St Pancras under what was known as Project Rio, named after Manchester United football player Rio Ferdinand. This service being provided by a mixture of Class 170 Turbo Stars and former HST sets made redundant when Virgin trains replaced their fleet with Voyagers, Project Rio lasting until September 2004, after which former Project Rio HSTs were returned to their leasing companies as Class 222 introduction gathered pace. On November 10, 2007, following a redrawing of the UK rail franchises by the SRA, 
Midland Main Line, along with Central Trains, was broken up into several smaller franchises, with trunk intercity services being allocated to East Midlands trains, while also incorporating multiple local services around Leicestershire, Nottinghamshire, Derbyshire and South Yorkshire, inheriting an initial fleet of 25 Class 43 power cars, although two were later handed over to East Coast, and in 2009 X-Network Rail 43089 joined the fleet, becoming the last East Midlands Class 43 fitted with a Valenta power unit, before a major engine failure in August of that year saw it replaced with a VP-185, the last non-buffered HST power car to lose its original power plant. The pattern of East Midlands Trains HST operations remaining largely the same, with the exception of some sets hired out to supplement East Coast services, until late 2017, when following an influx of Class 180 units into the fleet of Grand Central out of King's Cross, three redundant six-car HST sets, powered by buffer-fitted XDVT power cars, were transferred into the fleet of East Midlands trains to add extra diagrams to Nottingham, bringing their total fleet of HST sets to 15. Sadly, following the end of the East Midlands trains franchise on August 17, 2019, replaced by the new East Midlands Railway, the latest franchise commitments of this new company were that the HSTs would be replaced at the first opportunity due to their continued use of slam door Mark III trailers which failed to meet the latest disability access legislation. The first move in disposing of HSTs being to replace VP185 powered sets with XLNER sets fitted with MTU power cars and better disabled access arrangements within the Mark III coaches. The 24 VP185 power cars being all out of service by the end of December 2020. While the XLNER sets, reduced to six cars, continue to ply their trade on the Midland Main Line until, following the introduction of Class 802s into the fleet of Hull trains during 2020, Four redundant Class 180s were brought in to bolster the Class 222 fleet and see final withdrawal of the HSTs, the last operations of these magnificent trains taking place during May 2021, with two power cars receiving celebrity colour schemes to mark the end of their careers, 43274 being the only member of the class to wear East Midlands Railway corporate purple, and the record-holding 43102, the fastest diesel locomotive in the world, being repainted into intercity swallow livery the final two East Midlands HST sets in service, making their last runs into and out of London on May 15, 2021, with 43102 and 43274 having the honour of powering the final run out of London St Pancras with the 2002 to Leeds, bringing an end to 39 years of HST operations on the Midland Main Line and 45 years of HSTs serving London.